Okay, so you've probably heard of rationalizing the denominator, maybe when you had something like 3 plus root 2 over 5 minus root 3. You've heard about rationalizing this denominator here. But what I'm going to be talking to you about now is realizing the denominator. Now, what I mean by this is this denominator is currently in complex form, and I want to make it become a real number. In other words, I don't want there to be an imaginary thing that we've got. So what I've written is, as with rationalizing the denominator of thirds, like this one that I've got here, what we do is we multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. And in this case, it's going to be the complex conjugate of this bit that we have here. So let's actually get straight into this. We are going to try and make the denominator um, become real, and then we'll be able to put it in this form. Technically, what we're doing is we're dividing with complex numbers, so we're learning about other kind of operations that you can apply to complex numbers. So we have 5 plus 4i over 2 minus 3i. What we're going to do to this is we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. So the conjugate is 2 plus 3i. You'll notice I've added in some brackets, I just find it mentally a bit easier to see what's going on. Now, what we've done here is multiplied by 2 plus 3i um, on the numerator and denominator. It's, import it's important to notice that this is just 1, and multiplying by 1 doesn't change the size of a number. So this isn't like an illegal thing that we're doing here. We're still talking about this same number, we're just multiplying it by 1 still. So let's concentrate about expanding the numerator. So we'll have the 5 times the 2, which is just 10. We've then got the uh, 5 times 3i, which is 15i. We've got the 2 times the 4i, which is 8i. And this is where you need to be able to do this in your head. You've got the 4 times 3 is 12, but remember, because there's two i's there, it's going to be a minus 12. Now, on the bottom here, we're going to think about using this speed tip, where I've written, you should know the difference of two squares is just a squared minus b squared. But the difference of two squares in the i version becomes a squared plus b squared. I'll show you why it works with this one in the long way, and then we can you can think about using a shortcut yourself. So I'm going to do this the long way to begin with. So I'll have the 2 times 2, which is 4, the 2 times 3i, which is 6i. I've then got the minus 3i times 2, which is minus 6i. And then I've got the minus 3i times the plus 3i. Well, the minus 3 times 3 is minus 9. And you have the i squared, which is minus 1, which makes it become a plus 9. So look, you can see what we've got here. We can see that you've got the 4 and then plus 9, which comes from the 4 and the plus 9 from these bits. So the 4 from the a squared and the plus 9 from the b squared. So if you want to start using that as a shortcut, I would be happy for you to do that after you've done a few questions practicing. So the numerator becomes dealing with the real parts first always. 10 minus 12 is minus 2, 15 plus 8 is 23, and the denominator, those six i's are going to cancel out, is just 13. Now they want it written in separate forms like this, the a plus b i, so you're going to get minus 2 over 13 plus 23 over 13 i. It's perfectly okay that a and b here are not uh they're rational numbers, they don't have to be integers. So the shortcut of that denominator is it's your 2 squared plus 3 squared that we've got there. I've written that you can use calculators to perform these kind of calculations with complex numbers too, but you must know this method of realising the denominator in case there are algebraic terms in the expression, in case there was algebraic stuff here and here, you wouldn't be able to type it in to the calculator. So just very quickly, I'll verify that this one is correct. So it's 5 plus 4i and 2 minus 3i, 5 plus 4i, and 2 minus 3i. Okay, so I'm already in the correct um, mode that we've got there. Just going to lock on there so it doesn't keep moving around. Type it in as a fraction, so 5 plus 2i, and, oh my gosh, I can't even remember what I just said. My brain has gone, uh, and 2 minus 3i. So I've already typed it wrong. 2 minus... I. I think I typed that, it should have been a 4. And so we do get minus 2 over 13 and 23 over 13i, so the calculator can perform these things for you. Okay, now let's have a look at doing some problem solving using these complex numbers. This is the kind of stuff that feels like it's going to be 
the kind of things that may be popping up in an exam type context. So the complex number Z equals three plus QI over Q minus five I, where Q is a real number. So this isn't imaginary, this bit. This is just a number for Q that we have here. Given that the real part of Z is one over 13, find the possible values of Q. Let's not even think about part B, let's just concentrate on this first thing. So when I look at this, the first thing I notice here is the denominator needs realising. You can either think about it as realising the denominator, or you can actually think about just doing this as a division. It's the same thing, okay? So I'm going to start by realising the denominator of z, and then I'm going to deal with the fact that the real part of z is 1 over 13. So we have 3 plus qi over q minus 5i. So we're going to realise this denominator by multiplying the top and bottom. Again, I like to add in these brackets, but hopefully you can recognise the conjugate is q plus 5i. q plus 5i. So I'm going to expand the brackets on the top so I get 3q plus 15i plus q squared i. And then the i's are going to give me a minus here, so I'm going to get minus 5q. Now I wonder if I can do that shortcut from before, and I'm going to get q squared plus 25. Minus 5 times 5 is minus 25, but the i's make it become a plus 25. So let's just jiggle the top so that we have the real parts and the imaginary parts separate. So what we're going to do is we will collect the real and imaginary parts together. The real parts on the top is 3q minus 5q, which is minus 2q, and that's over q squared plus 25. The imaginary parts, I've got 15 plus q squared, q squared plus 25, I. Hopefully you can spot these are the imaginary parts. I just put I outside and kept it like this. Whoops. So now they've told us that the real part of Z is 1 over 13. In other words, I know that this thing here is 1 over 13. So I'm going to come back up here. And I'm going to try and see if I can solve that equation. So minus 2Q over Q squared plus 25 is equal to 1 over 13. So I'm going to multiply by q squared plus 25, so it comes up here. And I'm going to multiply by 13, so it comes up here. So minus 2q times 13 is minus 26q. And 1 multiplied by q squared plus 25 is just q squared plus 25. And so what I've got here is a quadratic. I get q squared plus 26q plus 25. Now you could solve this on the calculator, but this is very simple. We can hopefully spot that this just factorizes to q plus 1 and q plus 25, meaning q is either minus 1 or q is minus 25. So we've done part A of the question and we have found the possible values of q. It then wants you to write the possible values of z in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real constants. So if you wanted to, you could go back to the beginning and substitute in the values of Q and work out the division. Or we could use this fact that we've got here. We know this beginning bit is going to be 1 over 13. So all I want to do now is work out what this imaginary part is going to be for part B of the question. So if Q equals minus 1, the imaginary part is going to be 15 plus minus 1 squared all over minus 1 squared plus 25. So that's going to be 15 plus 1, that's 16 over 26. Uh, is that right? 16 over 26, yeah, which is 8 over 13. So we would then have that z is equal to 1 over 13 plus 8 over 13i. Now if q is equal to minus 25, we would have 15 plus minus 25 squared over minus 25 squared plus 25. Here's the time for me to use a calculator. So we're going to do 15 plus minus 25 squared over minus 25 squared plus 25, which is 64 over 65. 
64 over 65. So Z is 1 over 13, because that bit's not going to change, plus 64 over 65i. Great, so that should give you enough um, help to be able to do exercise 1D. And there's some really good questions also in the mixed exercise that you might like to have a go at on this as well.